The U.S. military has carried out a strike in Syria's Deir al-Zor against what are called infrastructure facilities used by groups affiliated with Iran's Islamic Revolution Guard Corps, the IRGC. Iran's official reaction, it denied having any links to sites targeted by the U.S. and Syria. Why does the U.S., who is occupying Syrian soil, believe that it can target anything inside Syria? In this edition of the Spotlight, we will look at the volatile situation in Syria, in particular northern Syria, created due to the U.S. illegal presence there, and the significance of the timing of U.S. strikes, coming at a time when U.S. and Iran are engaged in the JCPOA revival talks. First, let's get an update from our correspondent, Mohammed Ali, who joins us from Damascus. Mohammed, at this point, to give us a recap about these strikes that has, has, have occurred, uh, that the U.S. actually executed, it seems like uh, 24 hours ago. Yes, yesterday the United States carried out a, a strike uh, on a, a location in Deir el-Zor uh, province, claiming it was uh, targeting an area uh, where there is a group linked to, to Iran over there. However, Iran rejected that claim as false, and this is not the first time that the United States carries out such a strike. Yes, but just last year there was a similar one. Uh, this uh, U.S. strike comes uh, just uh, recently after uh, one of its bases uh, in Syria, in Al Tanf area, uh, was uh, hit uh, uh, over there uh, and was subjected to uh, a drone attack. Of course, no one claimed responsibility for that attack at that time. Now, what is interesting is what the uh, statement of the United States said with uh, regards to the goal of this strike. It said that it is aimed at protecting the U.S. forces inside Syria. And here, if you ask analysts, uh, it's interesting to hear such a statement because what the United States is trying to do is to uh, tell the world or portray to the world that it is in a state of self-defense. Well, uh, uh, the, the reality is the opposite. The United States is not in a state of self-defense. It is attacking the civilians, attacking the Syrian people, uh, striking their homes, looting its, ter its uh, resources, the oil, for example, inside Syria, dividing the country by supporting so-called SDFA uh, and, and giving them hope for a... a creating some kind of a state. So all of the practices of the United States and Syria are illegal. It is occupying the country, and it's targeting any side that actually fights terrorism, while it's claiming that it itself is fighting terrorism, which is opposite to the reality on the ground. Thank you very much for that. Mohammed Ali, of course, one of them from Damascus. Uh, at this point, let me introduce our guest for this edition of The Spotlight. Our guest, uh, Sarah Flounder, joins us. She's the co-director of the International Action Center from New York. Also joining us is Ken Stone, Hamilton Coalition to Stop the War, who joins us from Hamilton, Ontario. Welcome to you both. Sarah Flounders, I'm going to first start with you um, and ask you a simple question uh, about why we're looking at, or Ken Stone, I guess we're starting with you first. I'm sorry. Um, Ken Stone, uh, looking at the... Um, looking at the strike that has taken place, uh, it wasn't a simple operation. According to reports, there were eight U.S. fighter jets, four which com were composed of four F-16 and four F-19E. Uh, uh, doesn't sound like a very simple o operation there. I believe Sarah Flounders then is with us uh, for this question. Uh, and it was reported uh, nine targets were hit in Syria. Uh, why do you think at this point this has been carried out, Sarah Flounders, by, by the U.S.? Well, f first of all, it's an absolutely illegal uh, attack and an outrageous attack on Syria's sovereignty. But at this time, uh, what is most threatening to the U.S. government is peace. The very idea that Turkey may be entering into discussions with Syria, that there might be a change among all the forces in the region uh, in their attitude towards Syria is absolutely threatening to the U.S. And it's also a time when the countries of the world who want to move forward with the JPCOA, uh, that's threatening to the U.S. While officially they claim to be for it, they are not for peace anywhere they need war, and they will use their vast, uh, you know, air force, their whole armadas, in order to constantly instigate wars. But the it has a response lot to here do. Uh, has been, Ken Stone, that uh, this U.S. attack, and I'm quoting Iran, um, on Syrian infrastructure and people, a violation of Syria's sovereignty and territorial 
integrity, the uh, sites that were targeted had no links to the Islamic Republic. Do you, do you uh, believe the way that the U.S. is using uh, the association of anything inside Syria with Iran to be, first of all, a valid reason for the U.S. to target what it claims to be Iran-backed groups or anything associated with IRGC at this point? I do not think it's a valid reason. The government of Iran is, a ally, is an ally of the Syrian government. Uh, the Syrian government under President Bashar al-Assad invited the Iranian government to send uh, forces, some for armed forces to Syria to help protect it against the regime change operation that was launched under the, under the auspices of the U.S. to overthrow the government of Syria and to carve up Syria into various little statelets, the better to gobble them up. This is part and parcel of the U.S. agenda all over the world. Uh, the U.S. does not recognize the territorial uh, integrity of other countries or their sovereignty. And uh, routinely, uh, every, since the Second World War has been at war with one country or other in the world. And in Syria, they have been um, trying to overthrow the government since the mid-1970s. The first sanctions, U.S. sanctions against Syria, I think, were 1972. Uh, the, the preparations for the regime change operation, which started under the auspices of the U.S. and its coalition of partners, uh, and so it began of, um, sh with a shooting operation, a shooting war in 2011, was actually started the preparations started in 2005 and, and 2006. Um, since the shooting war started, the U.S. has, uh, has supported armed terrorist groups inside of Syria, including Daesh, which we call ISIS here in North America. And uh, they have um, supported, they have, in, on a, they have crea created a number of illegal military bases, including the bump at Al Tamf base over the border from Jordan, and in eastern Syria, the U.S. Uh, has conducted an uh, out-and-out occupation for the past few years, uh, sitting on the oil fields, as Trump said, to take the oil and gas, but also in an alliance with uh, the SDF, uh, a Turkish separatist outfit that's seeking to carve. Uh, a, a Kurdish state out of parts of Syria, Iraq, Iran, Turkey. Uh, so the U.S. routinely in Syria and around the world has been uh, has been disrespecting other people's, other countries' sovereignty and territorial integrity. Well, uh, Sarah Flanders, the U.S. has come out and said that these strikes that were exercised uh, 24 hours ago, they were actually uh, necessary because uh, they uh, were meant to protect and defend U.S. personnel. Now, that it's, it's pretty ironic for the U.S. to say that when it's on Syrian soil without the invitation of Bashar al-Assad um, and, and, and is uh, there violating, as our guest there said, uh, Syria's uh, sovereignty, and yet it claims that the, it's to protect uh, Syrian, uh, I'm sorry, American uh, personnel. How, how is that possible for the U.S. Uh, to say that? And then who, who's, who's the buyer of that stance? Is well, that question addressed? Really no, that's for okay. Sarah Flounders. I'm sorry, Ken Stone. Go ahead, Sarah Flounders. Uh, there is no basis for any U.S. forces to be in Syria, be bombing Syria, to be running camps of terrorists in Syria, and they run, at this point, still 19 camps, to be stealing Syrian oil, which they are doing in thousands of container trucks that move across Syria. None of this, none of this has any basis in legality. It's absolute piracy. It's an effort to dismember Syria. Uh, it's an, an effort to actually um, break up the whole region. It is also aimed at Iran, who is there, as Ken very accurately said, at the invitation of the Syrian government and has given real solidarity and assistance now, the U.S. has a regime change plan for Iran, too, and they want to inflame all the relations in the region and are threatened by any effort 
of the countries of the region to come to an agreement, even to come to a ceasefire. They're threatened by that, and they will use their war instruments. And in this case, you know, F-16s, F-15Es, those aren't small. That's, that's not a drone attack. This is really U.S. fighter jets bombing Syria. And they have done that since 2015, and they have um, imposed sanctions in an effort to destabilize Syria for decades. So every step of this is completely illegal, an attack on the sovereignty of Syria and an effort to destabilize the entire region. There, they have, there's no legal basis for it whatsoever, and yet they will always assert this is part of some rules-based order. What, what that rule is is simply the U.S. is supposed to rule, uh, and that is being challenged. That certainly is being challenged. Well, uh, the, the mere presence of the U.S. on uh, Syrian soil, on the one hand, uh, and for it to have a military base in uh, Al Tamp is what uh, the uh, U.S. decided to be uh, the reason when it was uh, attacked by a drone, I guess, uh, for what happened 24 hours ago, Ken Stone. You talked about how this Al Tamp um, has been uh, reported to train terrorists and for uh, it to have U.S. either direct or indirect uh, uh, cooperation with these uh, terrorists or terrorist groups. Uh, that uh, operate in and out of this camp. Tell us more about that, because that is something that both Iran and Russia have accused the U.S. when it comes to this particular uh, Al Tamf garrison, which is used by the U.S. forces. Well, Al Tamf is on the uh, uh, Jordanian border, uh, and but it's there. There's a bump now since 2011 onto the Syrian side, and on the Syrian side. Uh, the camp, uh, the enlargement of, of the camp, which is totally illegal um, and a violation of the sovereignty of, of the Syrian peop people, uh, is uh, being used to train uh, Daesh terrorists for renewed attacks on Syria. As you know, the Syrian government, with the help of Iran and Hezbollah in Lebanon and the Russian government, uh, managed to defeat the about 90% Syria. Uh, uh, the U.S. has started to um, use the um, Al Tamp base to uh, re reorganize the uh, dis disparate uh, groups of uh, terrorists, Islamic ter terrorists that it has supported, and it's using that base to uh, try and encourage further incursions and destabilization in the western part of western and southern parts of Syria. Uh, uh, that, that uh, the Russians have uh, said that as well, and the Russians have attacked that base twice with, uh, with uh, planes uh, in the last month, and they have, uh, they have even notified the U.S. in advance of these attacks uh, and told them where they were coming and why they were, why they were attacking uh, the base. And I believe that the Russians were delivering a message to the Americans saying, uh, we are not going to tolerate much longer uh, your training of uh, terrorists inside of Syria to des destabilize our Syrian ally. Uh -huh. Well, that's a great point that you make there about the Russian involvement. And Sarah Flounders, I'd like to find out uh, what is going on there when it comes to Russia. Russia has said, it's being, as our guest there explained fully about Al Tamf, how the U.S. uses uh, the training of Daesh terrorists there. But... Uh, uh, it seems like Russia has stepped up its uh, not only actions about targeting those terrorists there, but also uh, being uh, very vocal about the fact that, uh, you know, the U.S. should uh, discontinue doing what it's doing. Do you think that Russia is now in this mode where it will continue on this path, targeting uh, areas around Al Tamf, some deducting that that perhaps is a message also to U.S. when it comes to the conflict in Ukraine? Well, certainly it is linked because the, the hope that some accommodation with U.S. could be reached uh, no longer exists in Russia today. Uh, and so in the past, uh, there was an effort to do two things and use diplomacy and so on very often. Uh, but now it's clear that the effort is to dismember Russia and to use NATO and to hack away uh, at 
um, in, in totally destructive ways. Uh, that's one step. Uh, it's a lot to do also with sabotaging the JCPOA, the very idea that the U.S. would, a treaty they signed, they signed as the Security Council, that all the, the countries of the world supported it, and it was the U.S. who ripped it up. So it means any of the treaties that they wouldn't expand NATO, every agreement treaty uh, that they have made, they are violating now more aggressively than ever. And because their influence is waning in the region and globally, they are more and more forced to use the only power they have, which is substantial, and that is their military power. Now, Russia today is challenging that and showing, uh, uh, certainly in Ukraine, and also they have the ability to give real assistance to Syria and to the countries of the region. Uh, they have military capacity, and that's important to recognize and very helpful for the countries of the region that are trying to survive. Uh, so these things are really intensely connected, and there are other countries that are looking at it and stepping back from their alliance, such as Turkey, with NATO, with the U.S., and thinking they should find ways to reach accommodation economically in trade and perhaps also politically. And that would be a real contribution and of assistance to Syria if, if uh, Turkey's role changed. That's very threatening to the U.S., and they want to do everything they can to break that and to assert themselves. I, I don't think it'll be very successful. Mm -hmm. It's one more way in which they're really uh, exposed, and I, it more shows their weakness and their inability to follow any of the agreements they've made. Well, uh, at, at the center of this, uh, if you agree, Ken Stone, is the fact that the U.S. is uh, creating instability due to its illegal presence on the ground there in Syria. I think we agree on that. But there's other factors here involved, such as Turkey's role, where it uh, is after the, uh, um, you know, these, uh, the Kurds, of which the U.S. is backing, of which Turkey uh, is targeting them and says, we want to actually carve out a, a territory. Uh, the simple solution would be for the U.S. to move out of Syria. But it's not doing that. So this, this instability is actually uh, just continues. And now we see how Turkey is on the offensive again, even though it promised not to go ahead with its, uh, at least uh, weeks ago when it came to Iran uh, and talked with Iran's leader in uh, Russia's uh, presence. Uh, how, how can this be resolved? I mean, the quick solution, as I stated, is for the U.S. to, to take off from, from Syria. But we don't, we don't see that happening. Um, I think that uh, Turkey made some pos sent some positive signals to Syria and to the world community uh, uh, in the last few weeks um, by saying that uh, that it was uh, agree agreeable to uh, President Putin's request to uh, Mr. Erdogan that uh, Mr. Erdogan meet, uh, find a way uh, to uh, work with President Assad to uh, achieve a political uh, settlement and peace in Syria. And uh, Erdogan was very, um, uh, very vocal about it. He said that he liked the idea and that, in fact, uh, his foreign minister, Mr. Chavusoglu, had met uh, Mr. the foreign minister of Syria, Mr. al at uh, the, on the sidelines of the non-aligned meeting last October and that there was already contact between the intelligence services of both countries. Uh, nonetheless, Turkey, uh, a few days ago, no, a week ago, uh, uh, sent planes and attacked Syria, and three Syrian army soldiers were killed, and six more were wounded. And I feel that, uh, that tur uh, Turkey, like the UAE and other countries in the region, are, have made uh, moves to stop the isolation of Syria and to restore diplomatic relations, bring Syria into the Arab League and back into the Arab League and so forth. However, I'm not sure that uh, this kind of rapprochement can take place between Turkey, who, which after all was one of the biggest players in the invasion uh, and, uh, 
uh, and this destabilization of Syria since 2011, I'm not sure there can be a rapprochement as long as the U.S. is sitting on the eastern third of Syria, where it supports the Kurdish separatists who attack Turkey and uh, create uh, a cycle of violence that Turkey, in, a, in exchange, attacks Syria. I think, as you pointed out, the, 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 the overall solution is for the U.S. to get out of Syria now. Um, and I think that the, uh, I'm, ho I'm hopeful, okay. and other people in the peace movement are hopeful, that once the special military operation in the Ukraine is finished, that the Russian government will turn its attention to the Middle East, and especially Syria, and put the necessary pressure on the U.S. to get out of Syria and stop destabilizing the entire region with its presence there. Well, uh, it, it's, it's interesting, and this is my final question, uh, Sarah Flounders, to you, which is the fact that we're looking at um, the UAE, which is uh, now uh, pretty much embraced uh, Syria. Assad made a trip to uh, Abu Dhabi recently, not, not very recent, where he was greeted there, and also Turkey, where the, uh, the President Erdogan, who was such a strong backer of uh, uh, the so-called Syrian opposition, indicated that it was ready actually for talks with uh, uh, President Assad. So uh, Saudi Arabia, probably along the same lines as the UAE, is going along with this at this point, though we don't hear about that. Uh, but the Arab reception is there, and the ones that aren't receiving that is the U.S. And we could interchangeably say Israel also, that keeps attacking Syria. So uh, where do things stand when you look at it in, the, in that lens? Under a minute, please. Okay, well, for the UAE and for Turkey, even for Saudi Arabia, they went along with U.S. plans for totally opportunistic criminal reasons. It didn't succeed. Syria has survived, and has survived because Iran and Russia and Hezbollah, but the Syrian people themselves fought, fought and made sure Syria survives. So now some of these countries are looking at it again. U.S. plans don't seem so all-powerful, and okay. that's important. We don't want to underrate these changes that really are happening and are well weakening U.S. influence in the region and globally. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we're fresh out of time. Sarah Flounder is co-director of the International Action Center from New York. Ken Stone, thank you so much. Hamilton Coalition to Stop the War from Hamilton, Ontario. And with that, we come to an end for this edition of The Spotlight from Mikovitahwe and the team. It's goodbye until next time.